All right, uh, Uncle here from TacticalGamer.com. I've got a cooperative 62-player uh, platoon uh, template for NATO for Arma 3 that uh, I'm going to show you how to use to get your first mission up and running in no time. So uh, let's see. First of all, um, I've gone to TacticalGamer.com and I've gotten into the mission development section. Website seems to be running slow for me today. So right into mission development. My connection seems to be dropping a lot this morning. I don't know what's going on with the ISB or what end it's on. There we go. And uh, if you go into the helpful links for mission editing in Arma 3, There we go. Uh, the templates for mission files is what I've downloaded here. Uh, so if I bring that up on my here, this is the the folder here, and I'm going to unzip it here. So I've got just the folder. So I'm going to delete that for just right now. All right. You can see I've got a mission. In your documents and Arma 3 other profiles is where your profiles are stored. And in my normal uh, profile that I've been editing from here, I've got a multiplayer missions folder where I've got all of the missions I've worked on over the last uh, few years. Uh, I'm going to work with a profile that doesn't have any missions in it. Um, I think it's this one. Anyway, as you can see, there is no uh, multiplayer missions folder in these. That's what I'm going to be working with. So let's create within our Arma game our first multiplayer missions folder and then I'll show you how to get the template in there. Okay so first up I'm going to go to play and multiplayer. I'm not going to use this editor, the single player editor. I'm going to go to a new uh, from the multiplayer menu and I'm basically just creating a client server on my own machine. I'm going to go to Altus and I'm going to double click on the new editor. This is what we need to do in order to start editing missions within Arma 3. It's just setting up the very first set of directories and that kind of stuff for tools for doing multiplayer mission editing. So it's going to load us into the editor, uh, into our multiplayer missions folder and uh, just takes a second to get through this the first time. We're just going to have to set up a playable unit on a mission and set up a file name to save it as in order to really get started. So, I'm going to start at the main airfield. All right, first thing that's there is the unit selection tool is already chosen up here. So I just double click down here and I create my first playable unit. And yes, I want to play as NATO. Uh, I can set up a variable name on the unit itself. And I can put in a description which will show up when I go to the player selection menu. This guy will show up as test guy. And I know I'm going to delete this unit later. However, that'll just get us up and running. Um, I'm going to click on the Intel button up here. Let's say we're going to create a cooperative six-player mi mission. So it's CO06 for six players. Uh, my new or first mission. And it's going to be version 0. I put version 1 when I first publish it, probably. And in the description will be a small little description. Uh, six players. NATO. Take out two uh, very important or HVT high value targets which will be our mission okay now I need to save it I'm going to actually just use my name that I'm using in my mission selection screen I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it into here control V and that will be the file name that's going to show up as. All right. 
Now, if I preview this mission, I'm going to go boots on ground, and there's going to be absolutely nothing to do, and the mission will never end unless I die. So there's really nothing to this mission, but I've set everything up within the editor, and I can exit out of this. Okay, now I can see it. My first mission shows up in the mission selection screen. Now we're going to go jump back out and do some file management on the other side. Okay, so now that I'm here, you can see that I've got... Um, if I open up this profile folder, I've now got a missions M MP multiplayer missions folder, and here's the mission.sqm file within that mission folder, which stores my units and everything that I you see within the in-game editor. Okay, so let's go back to the profile I downloaded. I'm going to open it. Uh, in my 7-zip, whatever you like to use. I'm going to open up this multiplayer missions folder here, get to my 7-zip window, and I'm just going to extract that whole folder into here. So now I've got a new mission available to me, the Co-op 62 plat Platoon Blue template that I created before, and it's got a bunch more files besides just the mission.sqm file. Okay. Now what I'm going to do just to cut to the chase here, uh, the mission desk QM file here has a bunch of playable units on it, and I'll show you how that works later. But I don't want to copy this over my new mission, right? I'm just going to now select all of this. All right, I'm going to deselect the mission.sqm file. I'm going to press Control C to copy. Go back to my new mission, Control V, and just paste in all these scripts. That's really all I need to do with it at this moment. Okay, I'll refresh my screen by getting in there. All right, now let's get into the end game editor and deal with it. I'll do later tutorials on how to edit each one of these files and customize your mission after we get the first thing set up. Okay, as you can see now, I don't have my platoon template showing up here. Basically, if I was to load up into any one of these missions or back out. Oh, let's back right out then. And create my server again. Now you can see my blue template shows up. Okay, now I can uh, open it up. Let's say go to edit and let's see what it looks like in the editor. In the editor, all it is is some playable units here. I've got a platoon leaders, I've got pilots, I've got medics, uh, alpha, bravo, charlie squads, and a weapon squad. I've got some crewmen and a mortar team available. All right, there's an ammo box that works with our arsenal script, which will automatically have a bunch of weapons in it that we'll edit later. All right, and a Zeus module so that while you're a logged in admin or if you're running this on your own client server while you're testing and creating a mission you have access to Zeus to be able to move some objects around or just fly around and see how things are working. Okay, that's really useful if you've got a bunch of enemies down and you need to test an end trigger you can use the Zeus module, drop down a bunch of artillery, kill all the enemies without having to spend hours and hours playing through. You can test your end conditions quite quickly. Alright, so what I want to do is I'm not going to save any of my changes. I am going to just back out, exit without saving. I'm going to get into my first mission, right? And I'm going to import that template of playable units. So I'm just importing the items from the mission SQM from the platoon template folder into this mission. Okay, so I'm going to, now that I've got my new mission opened up, I hit the merge. I choose the blue, the platoon template here and it's basically just going to import the objects from the mission SQM into this mission SQM file. Connected. And I can see that by scrolling back out and going over to the salt flats and there's all the units and you'll notice none of them are made playable. Okay, so if I want a six player mission I'm going to use my alpha team here. I'm going to leave them in and delete everybody else so I just hurled my cursor over top of any of these units and press the delete key and it deletes them. All right, so I'm going to delete all these medics except for one and all the rest of these units. It's easy to zoom out and then you can delete a bunch of these quite quickly. OK, 
Okay, I got my unit selection tool, bring my medic over here. I'm going to delete the other fire teams in here. All right, I am going to add in a, an engineer. So I've got an engineer here. I'm going to double click and choose a NATO repair specialist. Okay, I'm going to name him just as I have on the other ones, but we'll get there. We'll call him a And you can you can tweak this up to be whatever you want later. He's automatically grouped to a unit that's close to him. Okay, and then I just need to select the group tool, select my medic, left click and drag over on top of the other group. There you go. You can see with the group units is when I select my leader. I've already got custom names set up for him. Okay, uh, now I just need to start making them playable, and I usually make one a player. And then I go through and make the rest of them playable. Now we can tweak all your names as you need later. I'm not going to worry about it. Just make all these units playable. Now I got my six player team. Oops, I don't want to ungroup my medic. Make sure I got my unit selection tool set up and I can bring these guys in a little closer. All right, there's our team. Now let's just select the marker selection tool and see what kind of markers I got here. I've got a marker name set up here, which is just indicating a start position. Uh, it's being referenced by the briefing right now, uh, as we'll see later. So I am going to leave it in here. And I got a reinforcements marker which is just a marker with the name Respawn West, which is essential for making our revive script and our respawns actually work. So this could say anything I want. I mean, I could change it from reinforcements to, to respawn. It really doesn't matter. I've just chosen everything else here um, at random. Okay, so I'm going to left click and drag over top of all of those. And zoom out and now I've got them all selected. Put my cursor over one of them and I can tell because of the pop-up. Left click, hold down and drag all those units over. Alright, and then just drop them in. I can zoom in now and place them into my base. Alright, now at this point I can bring my respawn marker and my ammo box over somewhere a little more sheltered. I can set up my start marker here. I can even indicate which way I want to go. You just select an object, press the left shift down, and then left click, and then drag your mouse around, and you're spinning an object around so I could spin any one of these units around as I'd want. That's right. Our first, because we just imported a new player, it made our test guy no longer playable. So that's a way that you can, uh, I mean, if I made this guy playable, he'll be in his own group, as we'll see later on. Okay, and that's basically it. We could test now the functions of the mission. So I'm into the preview, I got a test guy, and then I got my team. I'll later delete the test guy, make him not playable so he doesn't show up there. So I could select in as the Dagger 1 leader, or the engineer, or the auto rifleman. and you'll fill out all the information for where it's saying your mission name by you and we do all that in the description.ext as we'll see later on. Okay, as you can see there's a custom briefing in here already. Um, uh, there. You can get the thing here, this is the reference that's taking us to that marker so if I was zoomed in, let's say I was zoomed in way over here and I clicked on this in the briefing, it'll go to that marker that I created called marker name. So that's just the reason why that marker is there. All right, so we continue on in and we'll see how it's working. I'm spawning in, I got my ammo box, 
Uh, anytime you place this type of box with our script, you're going to get the arsenal on it. So if you want to create a box that has custom objects in it, and it does not have the arsenal on it, you'll have to put down a different type of box, not the NATO supply box. Okay, and the arsenal opens up and has all the same objects in there that we have on the insurgency mission at the moment. Okay, I could test my respawn by killing myself, uh, but that's going to take some time. Uh, but I'll let's see. Right now, if I just respawn, I can test that it's actually working. Okay, I was respawned. Excellent. And I can test that the revive is working if I want to by killing myself. Okay, so now we've got the basics of a mission set up. All right, now we need to create our first objectives and go from there. But you've got your respawn, you've got your arsenal up and running, you've got to play our markers. I think if I... I uh, don't know how I could test that because I don't have another player right now, so I can't show you that the player markers are running and all of that. Anyway, there you go. There's your first start. This is Uncle from TacticalGamer.com, and let's get you into mission editing.